Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the mandibular first premolar. What we are going to discuss in this short video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development. We are going to discuss the tooth num the number of this tooth and various tooth numbering systems and we will discuss the landmarks that are present on the mandibular first premolar. So watch this video till the end. So the timeline or the chronology of development, the mandibular first premolar, the calcification, it begins by near the age of two years. The crown is completed by the age of five to six years and the tooth, it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 10 to 12 years. And if you add plus two, then the root is completed by the age of 12 to 13 years. Now, what is the number of this tooth uh, in various tooth numbering systems? So, this is central incisor, lateral, canine, and first premolar. So, in the universal numbering system, for the right premolar, the number is 28 and for the left premolar the number is the number is 21 central lateral canine first premolar central lateral canine and first premolar so now the number of uh, this the mandibular first premolar in the palmar notation system so in the palmar notation system, the number is four, whether it is a right premolar or the left mandibular premolar. The only difference is this symbol. This symbol, it indicates it is of the mandibular left quadrant. And this symbol indicates that this is the tooth of the mandibular right quadrant. Now, what is the number of this tooth in the FDI notation system? So, in the FDI notation system, this is central incisor, this is the lateral incisor, canine, and first premolar. So, the number is the number is three four. Three indicate that it is the left quadrant, mandibular left quadrant, and four it indicate that this is the number of the tooth. Similarly, for the left, for the right quadrant, the number of the mandibular first premolar is 4-4. Four, four. The first 4, it indicate that it is the mandibular right quadrant and the second 4, it indicates the number of the tooth. You can see more details about the tooth numbering system in the description of this video. Now, the first premolar, it has a large buccal cusp. As you can see in this picture from the proximal aspect and a small known functioning lingual cusp and sometimes this small cusp it appears like a small cingulum and that's why it, it has other more many characteristics of a smaller canine uh, this tooth it is smaller than the second mandibular premolar the opposite is true in case of the maxillary first premolar in which the maxillary first premolar is larger as compared to the maxillary second premolar. Now from the buccal aspect, the middle buccal lobe it is well developed. So this portion is the middle buccal lobe. And this bu middle buccal lobe, it is known as the buc it forms the buccal ridge. A similar labial ridge is present in the canine. It is a large pointed cusp is there. This is the pointed buccal cusp. Now, there are two sides. This is the mesial side and this is the distal side. So, the cusp from the cusp tip, there are two ridges. This is the mesial cuspal ridge. So, this cuspal ridge that is called mesial cuspal ridge, it is shorter as compared to the distal cuspal ridge which is slightly larger now the root of this tooth 
it is slightly shorter than the mandibular canine otherwise the root it also appear similar to that of the mandibular canine now the crown it tapers towards the lingual aspect so the crown it tapers towards the lingual aspect so you can see uh, the mesial side and the distal side of the crown from the lingual aspect this is the lingual cusp so the lingual cusp it is always small and because the lingual cusp is small you can see the part of the occlusal surface from the lingual aspect in addition to the occlusal surface you can see the cusp tip and the cuspal slopes from the lingual aspect as well now one of the important feature of this tooth it, from the lingual aspect is presence of this groove and this groove is known as the mesiolingual developmental groove. So from the occlusal surface, this groove crosses the mesial marginal ridge and continues on the tooth surface. So this groove is known as the mesiolingual developmental groove. Now, similar to that of the crown, the root, it also tapers towards the lingual side. This is very narrow on the lingual side and it forms a sharp bridge. Now, the tip of the buccal cusp, it is centered over the root. So, because there is more convexity of the crown or more lingual inclination of the crown, the tip of the cusp, it is centered over the root. Now, the lingual cusp, it is just in line it is just in line with the outer border of the root. The mesial marginal ridge, this is the mesial marginal ridge and this mesial marginal ridge, it has a sharp inclination towards the lingual cusp, towards the lingual side. So because of the sharp inclination of the mesial marginal ridge, you can see this another ridge that is known as the buccal triangular ridge. So you can see this ridge because of the sharp inclination of the mesial marginal ridge. This groove, this is the mesial, mesial lingual developmental groove. This is the mesial lingual developmental groove and it is one of the characteristic feature of this tooth. So as I already mentioned, this is the buccal triangular ridge. So the part of the occlusal surface it is visible from the mesial aspect. Now, from the distal aspect, uh, from the distal aspect, the distal marginal ridge is relatively higher as compared to the mesial marginal ridge. So, this is the distal marginal ridge, and this ridge it is relatively higher as compared to that of mesial marginal ridge. The marginal ridge, it is smooth and there is no developmental depression as devel the developmental depression that is present on the mesial surface of this tooth. So the surface of the root, it exhibits more convexity uh, as compared to the mesial surface. In the mesial surface, there was a uh, very, very shallow depression that is present on the root surface. Now from the occlusal aspect. So from the occlusal aspect, the mandibular first premolar, it is roughly diamond shape. It has a diamond shape outline. The buccal ridge, it is prominent. So this ridge is known as the buccal ridge, similar to the canine in which a labial ridge is present. So this buccal ridge, it is prominent. There's a well-developed marginal ridges. This one is the distal marginal ridge. And this is the mesial marginal ridge because the mesial marginal ridge, at the termination of the mesial marginal ridge, there is a mesial lingual developmental, depre developmental depression. So that's why this is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge. And both of these ridges, they are well developed. From the tip of the cusp, this is a buccal cusp, there is a, dis there is a ridge, this raised linear elevation is a ridge and we call this ridge as buccal triangular ridge so from the buccal cusp this triangular ridge it is well developed opposite to this ridge there's another ridge that is known as the lingual triangular ridge and the lingual triangular ridge it is 
very small and it is less developed. And as I already mentioned, the lingual cusp, it is smaller in size. Now, from the occlusal aspect, if you see uh, in more detail, there are two depressions. So, just adjacent to these ridges, buccal and the lingual triangular ridge, there are two depressions. This depression is known as the distal fossa, fossa and this depression is known as the mesial fossa. Why mesial? Because this mesial lingual developmental group. So this is there's a depression, and this depression is the mesial fossa, and this irregular depression is known as the distal fossa. So they are not exactly triangu triangular in shape. So if you have any questions, do ask in the comments. If you have any feedback, also share share your feedback with us. Again, thank you very much for watching and stay blessed.